you guys know the story by now. The Super Nintendo is about to launch in the US and with Sega of America under new leadership, they decide to pack in their new flagship mascot title free with every piece of Genesis hardware. Sonic the Hedgehog would be the media darling of 1991, garnering all sorts of praise for its speed, graphics, and sound. It's credited as one of the smartest moves Sega ever made, turning then Sega of America president Tom Kalinske into somewhat of an overnight gaming celebrity. Sonic would sell millions of hardware units for Sega and spawn multiple sequels and spin-offs in the following years. Sonic became the face of Sega instantly, portraying their 90s attitude as the coolest thing in gaming. Sega slapped Sonic onto everything too, advertising it every chance they could. He even had an animated TV series. All of a sudden, the Genesis was no longer the underdog system battling the great Nintendo juggernaut. Instead, it was the cool thing to own, and to hear most people tell it, Sonic was the reason for it all. In this episode, you will get a look at the original Sonic game for the Sega Genesis from my viewpoint. I wasn't a bandwagon Sega fan that jumped on board with the hype. I had owned my Genesis since late 1989, and had loved the platform long before Sonic showed up. The question is, is Sonic even a good game, and did it deserve all that praise? The launch of Sonic was mind-blowing. The gaming magazines jumped on it as one of the best games of the year, and the ratings came in to prove it. Whether you read Electronic Gaming Monthly, GamePro, GameFan, or whatever, Sonic was the talk of the gaming world. What had been a small group of classmates at my school that actually owned a Genesis the previous year, all of a sudden exploded into many more. Eager to get my hands on it and give it a go, I was expecting nothing less than a Mario Killer, a game of such quality that the Sega name would never be spoken of ill again. Firing up Sonic, I was met with nothing short of an incredible game. It was just like the magazines had preached to me for the months leading up to its release. The graphics were unbelievable. They were colorful, loaded with parallax scrolling, and everything was animated impressively. I even dug the music, which was just as catchy as could be for a title like this. The gameplay wasn't just fast, but also had a sense of freedom and boundlessness to it. Sonic could jump damn near across the entire screen in a single go, and if he had enough speed and momentum, he could make it multiple screens before he landed. I hadn't played anything quite like it before. There was no question there was something special here, and I liked that about it. Sega may have been trying to create something to compete with Mario, but Sonic couldn't have looked, sounded, or felt any more differently. I actually appreciated that, and looked forward to playing it even more to see just how crazy the stage design actually got. As I got deeper in, the stage design radically changed. What had started as speed and the freedom to tackle a stage how I wanted turned into having to wait for blocks to cross lava or some other platform to jump onto. I could handle it though. I mean the graphics were still beautiful, the music was still catchy, and Sonic was still responsive. I mean these were the fire stages so it was to be expected. Surely the speed would be back in the next level and that sense of freedom would return. Things livened up a bit in the next area thanks to being bounced all over the place. There was a definite level of appeal with being launched all over the stage, but even this began to get bogged down with having to wait for slow moving blocks to open up your way. The stage design was much less free here as well as each section was a dead end they needed to be climbed out of regularly, stopping any real momentum and speed. You would also get into situations where the spring pads would be purposely located in areas that would require you to get perfect bounces to move on. 
This grew tiresome as hell and again the promise of speed from the first area was nowhere to be found. I got tired of bouncing around randomly, got more tired of waiting for slow moving blocks to move forward, and the overall pace was just not fun. It honestly felt like the game was being slowed down on purpose so the developers could make the game longer. I persisted however in the hopes of more of the fun from the first few stages. Yet things would hit rock bottom when I landed in the Labyrinth Zone. Here all pretense of speed and freedom is utterly lost. The area is covered in water, creating two additional problems for the little blue blur. First, you are much slower in the water, and second, you can't hold your breath but for so long. Combined with the claustrophobic level design, this series of stages became a nightmare and tedium. With your speed gone, you basically meander through looking for air and trying to avoid spikes and insta-deaths. None of these levels are fun and stand in direct contrast to the beginning of the game. I wouldn't have minded little pockets of water to contend with for the sake of challenge, but being stuck in this deluge, waiting for air bubbles, slowly climbing my way out of poor level design stressed my patience pretty hard. It wasn't that this was difficult either. The base Sonic experience actually isn't a very hard game. It was the lack of fun factor that made it tough. These levels took a game I was already starting to dislike and pushed me the rest of the way. Of course back then I stayed the course to beat a game because it was often the only thing I had to play for a while and for bragging rights with my friends. Thankfully things improved considerably in the next stage. Some of that open freedom returned and there was moments of great speed. Sadly the stage design was again less than stellar. While I enjoyed the return of some of that speed, I found myself not really engaged with the simple platforming the lack of enemies, and the general feeling of emptiness within the stage. I mean the opening level was loaded with a variety of enemies, but here there were next to none. The boss fight wasn't so bad though. The final area suffers much of the same. There are next to no enemies with only the stage itself offering any real challenge. You pretty much have to avoid the blind death drops peppered throughout the level, with all other gameplay basically just waiting for platforms and blocks to align where you need them. This again gets old quickly and just offers no real fun factor. And then it gets worse by regurgitating some of the awful designs you had to slog through earlier. These palette swaps again test your patience, not because they are challenging, but because they simply aren't much fun. All of this leads up to the final fight with Dr. Robotnik himself in what has to be the worst end battle ever. You are stuck in a tiny room and the dock just keeps popping up to be hit. That's it. No worries from any enemies, no worries from additional strategies. Just two pistons popping out with plenty of space to run away. And then it's over, that's it. What had been touted as this speedy experience was actually a poorly paced and slow affair for well over half the game. The level design was just plain bad in a lot of places, 
and frankly, the underwater segments were some of the worst levels I had played in any Genesis game. None of those were fun in the slightest. It's actually a fairly easy game too. The only real time I had any trouble was trying to collect all the Chaos Emeralds. You have to get them in special stages that open up after collecting a certain number of rings. The first few are easy, but it gets tougher later on and missing one often ruins the entire playthrough. But you want to know something really strange? I still love a lot of the elements of this game. The opening three areas are incredibly fun to play, and that iconic soundtrack brings a smile to my face every single time I hear it. There is a powerful nostalgia here that is associated with the time it was released, and there is no denying it's still attached to it all these years later. But I can't really say the game is nearly as good as so many made it out to be. I had owned my Sega Genesis for over a year and a half before Sonic was released, and there were numerous better designed games already on the platform. It really was distressing to see so many claim it the best made Genesis title ever when so many Genesis games before it were better to me. It was a fine lesson to my 16 year old self about how hype and mob mentality affects the things we support and buy. There were numerous Genesis games that should have spurred the console on to better sales to compete with its rivals, but those had fallen to the wayside, forgotten by the masses that flocked to everything game magazines and commercials told them to buy. I don't dismiss those of you that truly love this first Sonic game. Heck, I can even understand it because I enjoyed enough of it to see how you could have enjoyed the entire thing. But for me, Sonic simply was not the game it was made out to be. Poor stage design, the lack of any real enemies in the late game, and areas that completely stripped away the speed and freedom you loved early on really hammered it overall, and no matter how colorful it was, or how good it sounded, would overcome that. I'm Sega Lord X. thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.